It's no secret that graffiti can get pretty competitive, shall we say. Especially in a lot of urban areas where a lot of graffiti writers are competing for limited wall space. In fact, it actually was that sort of oversaturation of graffiti writers, which initially in areas like New York City, gave birth to throw up styles, straight letters, bubble letters, hollows, and much, much more. All of those started to be employed by graffiti writers to help graffiti writers stand out. And that's the key thing here, standing out. When there were 50 tags on a doorway or in the subway car that you were in, it's a lot easier to just do, say, a throw up style or something like that than just try and put another little tag somewhere and hope you get seen. And that evolution in a lot of ways is really what gave birth to the graffiti artist rather than just the graffiti writer. But speaking of standing out today, that is what we are talking about the top four ways that you can personally make your graffiti tags stand out tags specifically so let's get right into it so these first couple ways are really just employing some pretty simple artistic concepts to help your graffiti tags stand out. They're gonna be concepts that you are gonna really want to know. And the last two are sort of some newer way of graffiti tricks, if you will, that really can help your graffiti tags stand out as well. Number four, this one may sound pretty obvious and it's definitely a lot easier said than done, don't get me wrong, but one way to stand out is just find spots that aren't already grilled. For those of you who haven't heard the term grilled before, that is simply a spot that is heavily tagged, infested with tags almost. Or in short, just a spot that makes it hard to stand out naturally. And that is the simplest way to stand out. Just find your own spots. Like I said, that is a lot easier said than done, but if we didn't explore the simplest solutions first, what would be the point, right? So moving on. Number three. Now this one can be super useful if you're competing eating in sort of a civilized manner for space. And that is simply use the right color for the spot. Now, a lot of graffiti writers and artists still even to this day gravitate towards using simple black and white paints and inks in mops, spray cans, etc. for tags and whatnot. And with very good reason, black and white sort of naturally generates the highest contrast that you can get on a lot of background colors surfaces. But bearing that in mind, when you are competing with a lot of black and white tags and whatnot, sometimes it is just a hot pink or a neon green tag that you can come in with to immediately draw the eye and make your tag the first one that any graffiti artist or normal person sees when they walk by. So it's always good to just have a nice mini brightly colored graffiti mop with you when you're out there. And secondly, choosing the right color doesn't only have to be employed when you're looking at heavily tagged spots or something like that. We can find plenty of examples here where proper color use helped a tag stand out even more. If we take a look at this video here of Cancer on the Grog channel, there's about 10 examples in this video alone. Here he is crushing this dumpster, which is like a dark blue, so he simply whips out a white or that perfect contrast. If you wanted to contrast a little bit better via color theory, you could have used like a neon yellow or something there. And that's the very same thing here with the white on black right there that you're seeing. A more subtle example is the red on beige here. This is also a perfect example of the first point. First, he found a spot that wasn't already grilled. This is his spot. And secondly, it may seem like there are a lot of colors that would have worked on that background, and there are, but instead of using, say, a yellow or an orange, which wouldn't have really worked at all, he's used that very bright red, which was complemented perfectly by that beige background, i.e. the environment that the tag is in. And that alone makes it stand out so much more. Number two, use the right tool for the job. There is a pretty good argument out there that says that in almost any situation, spray paint is almost just better to be using because it is bolder, you can write bigger with it, it's more prominent. It's not necessarily for everything, but it is for a lot of cases. If everyone around a spot has used a 10 millimeter drip mop, pull out your 25 millimeter drip mop or your spray can. And when you start combining that with the third thing that I told you, or the third thought top thing, the second thing I said, which was the third 
you know what I mean. When you start combining that with making sure you use the right color for the job, then you start to be on to something here. For example, I have a trusty collage of doorways here that I was able to find on a New York-based site. If we look at the one on 312 here, it makes it clear that Stano just plain used a bigger mop, and as a result, he owns that doorway. That's just end of story, game over. It is just the first thing you see. It's what your eye is gravitating towards. Similarly, this Noxer tag, love that tag by the way. Noxer's done it bold. He's used spray paint where everyone else brought their little mops, and he just owns that doorway now. It's as simple as that. This picture of all these doorways is actually really good because in each picture, it employs one of the last two things that we talked about. Your eye is drawn to one or two tags on each doorway specifically because they were mindful of the color that they were using, the orientation, or the boldness of the tag. So feel free to pause and take a look at that a little bit more. If you're serious about understanding these artistic concepts that really are going to help you stand out amongst a ton of writers in an urban area. These simple concepts are the ones that will serve you best in any area of art, but especially graffiti art, and they are the ones that are going to put you ahead of other graffiti artists. Number one, and the final way to make your graffiti tags stand out is one that really has only gained popularity in recent times, we'll say. And that is simply busting out those dual tone color tags or those multi-color tags via, you know, your split streakers or just using two different markers that have two different colors. Whether it be by doing exactly that, alternating colors between each letter, or using some of those split streakers to stand out, it is a surefire way to get your tag noticed. Now, this is great, but you do still have to consider what colors you're using on a particular background or surface. And this is personally why I don't really love the streakers that are like six or eight different colors, because some of them inevitably just end up clashing with each other, or uh, at the very least, the surface that they are on, the color of it. And that only gets amplified if you aren't dropping a fire hand style. Weckman and Resk12, these guys that I'm showing you here, they can get away with this stuff because their hand styles are so professional and refined, but if you're using wacky color combos in some of these scenarios where it doesn't necessarily work that well, it just makes you look bad. But with that being said, if you are interested in those split streakers specifically that you're seeing on screen, you can check out the full review and tagging test that we did with them here on the channel. That is what is on screen for you guys to check out right now. I hope to see you over there soon. Until then, feel free to throw a like on the video. Peace.